All right, I know, I know. You think you already know how to use a ruler, right? But do you know how to use a ruler like a pro or like a noob? Let's find out. Number one, holding your ruler and drawing a line. This is no good. And neither is this. You need to get your first finger and little finger as far apart as possible. If in doubt, think heavy metal. Thumb and middle finger works well too. Just keep them far apart. Point your pencil towards the ruler so it touches the ruler and the paper at the same time. Number two, the right ruler for the job. A steel ruler is cool, but if you use it for drawing lines, you will wear out your pencil very fast. Similarly, if you use a giant ruler for doing your maths work, you'll get in a mess. Use short plastic rulers for underlining stuff, long plastic rulers for drawing or making long lines, and steel rulers for cutting. Never use a craft knife without a grown-up. Number three, measuring and marking. You need to get your head right over the thing you're measuring. If you have a thick ruler and you're at an angle, you will be wrong. Put a small dot at the place you need and then join the dots up. Number four, being annoying. As a noob, the best way to be annoying with a ruler is to drop it on the floor. There are several stages to this. First, wait for the teacher to start talking about something important. Second, make sure to drop the ruler on the floor, not a bag or your foot as this won't make much sound. A tile floor is always best. Third, you then need to drag your chair backwards and spend 20 to 30 seconds trying to pick up your ruler before dragging your chair in again. Okay, so you've made it past the noob level of ruler usage. Now let's look at pro usage. Number five. Holding your ruler and drawing a line, like a pro. Once you know how to hold a ruler, you're ready to think about your paper. Normally, you will want to have most of the paper under your ruler hand to keep it steady. This is also true for cutting. When drawing a line between two points, Put your pencil onto the first point and move the ruler up to it. This is because the pencil lead has some width too and may add a millimeter or more to your measurement. Draw down from the first point to about halfway, then draw up from the second point. This is so you don't go too far over the second point. To be super precise, you can move the ruler against your pencil at both ends before starting to draw. Make sure to hold it tight. Number six, measuring and marking. Some rulers start at the zero point and some start in a bit with a lip. The first type are good for measuring real 3D objects because they can go right up to things, but if they get damaged, then they become much more difficult to use. 
The second type are best for measuring and drawing lines on paper because you have a little bit of extra space to stop. For super accurate marking, use a little V that comes away from the mark you need. Then line up your ruler with the points of the Vs. Ooh, that's nice. Number seven, drawing lines with a pen. When you underline with a pen, it's easy to smudge the ink when you move the ruler away. If you have a beveled ruler, that means one with a sloping top, you can turn it over to avoid smudging. Just make sure to clean the edge before using the ruler again. Some well folded paper will also work, although it's a bit of a waste. Number eight, parallel and perpendicular lines. Rulers with extra marks on them like this one will help you to draw parallel lines. Just line up your first line and draw the next one. You can also draw parallel lines with a set square like this. Of course, a set square draws perpendicular lines too, but you'll have to wait for the use a set square like a pro video from Mr. O coming soon. Maybe sometime. Number nine, ruler tricks and recommendations. You can find the center point of any quadrilateral. That means square or rectangle or, well, shape with four sides. Anyway, you can find the center point of any quadrilateral with a ruler. Just draw lines from opposite corners and the point where they cross is the center. If you need to find the middle of a line that's longer than your ruler, simply pick a number and measure it from both sides. Then you can find the middle of this shorter line. If your ruler has a hole in it, you can draw circles with it. Finally, to divide a piece of paper into equal parts without going crazy with maths. So let's say you've got a 10 centimeter piece of paper and you need to divide it into three parts. 10 divided by three is 3.333333. An easier way is to pick a number that divides into three, such as 12, and then measure that across the paper. Mark out your points and draw your lines. Nice. I've used a lot of rulers in my time, and honestly, the best ones aren't the most expensive. For short rulers, pretty much any ruler will do, as long as it's see-through, and has a beveled edge. Muji make excellent rulers, such as this metal one, which can stand to be picked up, or this 30 centimeter ruler with guides for parallel lines. I added a hole to my one so I can hang it on the wall. The best long metal and plastic rulers I've ever found are from Living Plaza. Yeah, the $12 shop such as this metal zero point ruler, which has a hole for hanging, although I use magnets to hang my one. They also have this amazing 50 centimeter ruler with parallel line guides and two types of beveled edges. Now that is pretty good for $12. So that's it. Oh, wait a minute. You want to know how to be annoying with a ruler like a pro? 
All right. You asked for it.